Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we have an exclusive deck profile for you guys. It's from one of the most famous players in the Netherlands. It's from Joshua Oosters, who w went into the top four at the Yuki Joe tournament, uh, an online tournament that was held a couple of days ago. And I am joined by Joshua here today. Yep, hello. Hello. Oh. Um, you played one interesting deck. I have seen a lot of traffic about this online. People want to know what's up and why and how and I know it's one of your favorite decks. Uh, yeah, for sure. Musket. And I know you've been testing Outlook online as well. So you're just going to play <laughs> both. <laughs> exactly. It's like it's like 20 good Eldritch cards and then 20 good Musket cards. So you might as well just do all of them. One deck, it's fine. Okay, so explain a little bit of the philosophy behind. Right. So for you though, uh, the Eldritch engine is obviously really strong. All the cards are basically plus one because like Conquistador pops a card and then in your opponent's turn it can set one of the the Eldritch cards from the deck and like the Eldritch cards they set the Golden Land cards from the etc etc. So it's just one floating engine. Um, but the thing is like it's not normal summon reliant at all. Like the deck plays no normal summon. So basically you can play any normal summon uh, along with the deck. So people have been playing Invoked because uh, the Golden Lord is a light, so you can make Mechaba with it. Or I've seen people play uh, like Zodiac because you can make Dryden, which is very nice if it's 2018. <laughs> <A> one um, <laughs> yeah. And um, basically the Musket Engine is of the same philosophy. You can just normal summon one of the good Muskets like Kaspar or Starfire and then trigger those with the, the Eldritch cards, whether it be the spells or the traps. And then every turn, uh, you can activate one of the spells or traps again because the, they replace themselves, and then you can trigger the yeah. musket again. Yeah, I've been uh, like, the longer I look at it, the more it makes sense. You could just banish one and set one in the same yeah. column of a musket. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Then uh, the thing is, it also adds a lot of power to the going second of the deck because Eldritch by itself can't really break boards. The muskets are obviously insane at breaking boards. So. Even if you like, don't have the the desperado or the cross domination or whatever to break their boards, if you can just bait out some of the gates and just summon max go plus four, then you're very likely to win the game anyway. Yeah, true. So, do you go first? Do you go second? Uh, yeah, it is a it is a going first deck. It's so easy to uh, trigger Starfire or Gaspar from like uh, Eldland or the Black Awakening or uh, Goods or just like summon Gaspar and set the traps in the same column and then trigger him that way. Even if you don't open the musket cards, uh, you're basically just playing pure Eldritch, which is, which is great at going first. So, Yeah, because muskets always has been kind of a go-second deck, especially yeah. with the new Max in the extra deck. Yeah, with the release of Max for sure. But I can definitely see it is work going first. It looks so strong. Yeah, uh, like there's a lot of games where you don't even go into Max at all. You it's just play musket stun, basically. Yeah, I can Arcon see that. Whatever. Such a such a cool way for the deck to adapt to new cards. It's so cool. It's an entirely different deck almost. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like if you're looking at it from the musket's point of view, it's for sure a very well, interesting way to play the deck, I guess. Okay, so uh, let's just go into ratios for a bit. Uh, sure. The only hand trap in the main deck is the ash. And so there's actually like a specific reason why I am playing ash because uh, it's a zombie. You can summon it from the deck with the the Scarlet Sanguine or the Black uh, Black Awakening. Yeah. Um, if you control the Golden Lord, and then because it's level three and the traps are level five, you can make Omega with it, and you can restore your resources. Or like, if all your Golden Lords are banished, you can uh, put them back to the grave because you're only playing two. Yeah, and they can summon um, themselves from the grave, so it's synergy as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Ash is just like. It's fine against every deck. Yeah, it's probably still one of the most versatile hand traps in the game. Yeah, uh, for, for sure, for sure. So, two outlick. Uh, yeah, in pure, it's for sure correct to play three of them. But at the same time, it's like a brick card. It doesn't really do anything in hands, especially where you're going first. And I think two is, to be honest, it's it's fine. Yeah, and for for a deck like this, it looks fine. You're not playing extravagance or something like that. So 
I am playing extravagance. Or uh, desires, I think. Desires. Uh, oh yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I meant. So I think two yeah. is indeed fine for such a thing. Um, maximum consistency three outlands. Yeah, that card's just insane. So obviously you just play three of it. Yeah, it's the only continuous card in the deck. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, also like... nice that with the uh, did you play with the adjusted rules? Um, no, we did not. Okay, oh. because then the continuous trap card would not count count as a trap card. It should yeah. be additional value, but we're still in yeah. European rules. There is exactly, yeah. no other rule set that has been given up by Konami for us. So we're still playing by the traditional DD Crow does not negate rules. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I do think it's funny to see only two Eldlixir of the Black Awakening in your deck. Not three. Uh, yeah. Uh, like in pure three is one hundred percent correct, but this variant like two is fine. Uh, it's sort of conflicts with Starfire. Like if you open Starfire with the Black Awakening, you can't trigger the Starfire because Black Awakening locks you into zombies after resolving it. Yeah, that's true as well. Um, basically, like the Scarlet Sanguine, the trap, it's just the best one. Okay. Uh, the, deck, the deck is super consistent. So. I never really missed the the third black black awakening. So this you're just fun. really chasing the trap card instead. Uh, basically, basically, also like um, what is really good is if you go like some starfire, activate Outland, then some Caspar from deck, and then you can trigger Caspar with the black awakening. Yeah. Um, that's like one of the best plays in the deck because you have two muskets right away, and then you can trigger the Caspar with any uh, musket card you have searched from the black awakening trigger. Yeah, that's really solid. That's pretty good. I like it that you're so... This deck is like, you're done. Your field is just done. You're ready to go. You're ready to respond. Yeah, yeah. Such a cool control concept. And the, yeah, it's really cool because like, every time you trigger Kaspar on your turn, it's basically Kaspar is disruptions on its own, which is really crazy. Yeah, so one Eldlixer of White Destiny. Yeah, it summons one from hand or grave, so it doesn't summon from the deck. So it's only good if you already have access to the Golden Lord, basically. It's still nice to have though, because like it helps you play around cards like uh, Hakuero or TD Crow, Call by the Grave, whatever. Like if you activate uh, the Lord effect, you can and they chain TD Crow, you can chain the White Destiny, so it doesn't get banished, which is nice. Yeah, I can imagine people are getting ready for this deck, so they're meaning. Yeah, for sure. Super popular uh, in the online format, so. Um, but one is fine. Like I said, it is in the consistency card, so yeah, and you can search it. So yeah, so mm -hmm. three Eldlixir to summon. Yeah, the trap is just and queen is just the best one, basically. Yeah, uh, one <laughs> conquistador or three conquistador. Yeah, yeah, like it's probably the best trap. Just it destroys a card, which is nice, and it floats. But the trap would probably be the best. It floated, but it doesn't. Yeah, so a Trident in 2020, but sure. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, two Hakuedo, not three. Yeah, uh, so in pure I would play three, but like the Musket Engine gives you access to the most broken card, which is Dancing Needle. <laughs> which, oh, yeah. <laughs> which is like Hakuero on steroids, so... I can yeah, I can imagine this being one of the cards you can cut a little bit. Uh, yeah, because you have basically like a better replacement. The only thing... That would make me consider playing three. Is at some point you run out of steam. The Eldritch engine, where you're, mostly when you're uh, playing against another Eldritch deck, so the, uh, not being able to get a third from the Eldritch just comes up, but it's fine. Only it's in fine. these super long games. Yeah, uh, exactly. So you are playing the counter trap. The counter trap is super nice. I don't know why people are hating on it. <laughs> I would play three, probably if I had the space. Have you seen this in the tournament as well, or? Only yeah, I think like I think mostly people play that one. Okay. Because it's searchable, right? So if you need it, it's there. Yeah, it makes but sense. I think it helps you play like uh, mostly against side after siding. It's really good because it helps you protect yourself from all the blowout cards. So true. And two goods to send the Eldlixer cards. Yeah, I'm specifically playing goods because it's really good with the with the magical muskets because it just it just triggers them on the first turn. Yeah, you can just send send one, banish one, set one, activate, then you have your two triggers with start of fire. Yeah. yeah. So uh onto the spice, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so that was the boring part basically, and then uh, the musket part of the deck. 
Uh, obviously, we just play we play three Kaspar because it's the best one. Yeah. Anybody who doesn't know what it does, like if you activate a card in the same column or your opponent activates a card in, in the column, which does happen, you can add any magical musket card uh, from your deck to your hand except the same card you activated. Um, you can even add himself, so that's nice. Okay. I'm looking at the wording. If you're in a mirror match, can you search the same one your opponent activated? You can. Oh, no, I don't. I don't think so, but I'm not sure <laughs> to be honest. That's funny. Not that it matters. But... Uh, no, you can't. So you can't add one with this. That's funny. So <laughs> if everyone's going to play Eldrick <laughs> muskets, you're prepared. <laughs> be sure to pay attention. Yeah. Then um, one dog. Like against the more grindy decks, it's nice to have a dog to uh, recure your uh, musket cards. Also, like my ratios are smaller than in the pure uh, version. Yeah. So you can out of them quite fast, and with dog you can just get them back. So that's why I decided to include one of them. At some point, if you're making such a combination, you have to make like sacrifices. Like there are uh, cards, like there's no Kid Brave, for example, as well, yeah. because it's just, as you said before, it doesn't fit. And that's also because I play like uh, lesser ratios of other musket cards, so Kid Brave just isn't going to be live a lot of the time. Yeah, true. So uh, and then three star fire because it gets you to Kaspar, which is the best yeah. one. <laughs> Looks real solid. It's kind. It's still yeah. weird to only see like such a small ratio of these cards. Yeah, like I might consider actually playing some more, but I'm just not sure like which one I would, which ones I would play. Yeah, it's difficult. Something. Yeah, because they would be like one-offs probably. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, like sometimes you just you grind through your opponent's disruptions, and then you can just go like normal summon any musket and just link it off into max and just like spend two guys or add two spells and traps, and it's just really strong anyway, regardless of the effect of the musket. Yeah, true. Uh, so then two, the spell and traps. Yeah. Two, 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 one. Yeah. Yeah, basically like less than. Uh, it's the worst one. Um, even though it is good going second against the uh, Eldritch deck, and mostly after siding, it's really good because it can negate evenly matched uh, and uh, what's it called, the Lightning Storm, cards like that. But I think one is probably probably fine. Yeah. Okay. I can I can definitely see that. Like I'm yeah. still used to like back in the day when you were only playing one needle and three last stand and last stand was one of the yeah. worst. But I can see this card being. A lot less impactful versus Eldritch, for example, because they can just banish it from the graveyard instead. Yeah. Funny to see how it evolves. And the last card in the deck, three extravagance. Yeah, yeah. So the thing that might be a bit weird if you're looking at the deck, I play a lot of one-offs in the extra deck. The truth is, like, basically all the cards except for Max and uh, Pleiades, they don't really matter. Like, even if you banish all the three Max. It's just fine because it's pot of creature. You get to draw two cards and you get to trigger trigger your muskets very likely anyway. So yeah, and it's not like you're going to summon four muskets of max anyway. So yeah, exactly. Like only cards that came up are basically like max. Mina's really good because I'm signing red reboots and like all the other cards. Like sometimes you make them, but it's almost never very important to make them. Yeah, fair enough. So. Nice. I, I'd say this is a really balanced and evolved deck list, in my opinion. It looks so solid, so clean. It was, it was pretty good. Like I'm not gonna lie, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was fine. It was okay. I, uh, it won me some money, so. It's, yeah, uh, it, it was okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's go to the extra deck first. Uh, One Omega. She explained yeah. earlier. I already talked about it. This card's like the best card in the entire Eldritch deck. Play <laughs> in any Pleiades. Yeah, you make it with like the the, the monster traps. They're both uh, light level five monsters, so yeah. it is. You're not playing a rank up magic for Dante anymore. <laughs> no, sadly. Oh, too bad. Too bad. Uh, the two rank tens or the yeah, it's, rank it's ten like, and the rank eleven. It's just like for OTKs. Okay, if it comes up, it comes up. You know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, be less. Yeah, this card's like really good against uh, Elvish. You make it with like with the Golden Lord, so that's why I decided to include it. I didn't end up making it in any games, but like, it's just a really, really solid yeah. Link monster. Just really strong. Yeah. Some uh, nightmares for removal. Yeah. It's like, in case it comes up. Uh, three musket max. <laughs> I said it's just the best one. You want to have it in the extra deck. Um, 
That's why I'm playing three. True. Uh, one Trish yeah. Baena, if it comes up. And most, yeah, mostly for like the red reboot, which I'm playing. And two Vampire Sucker. Yeah. Like it's good with the with the Eldritch card. Okay. So uh, side deck. Uh, the side deck was really good in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I played, I played three Nibiru against like uh, the rock deck, but also against. Uh, like hero burning abyss uh whatever you know this card's just for high impact super good so yeah, yeah. three gamma about that gamma because i think it's one of the best hand traps against um emancipator it's like it doesn't only negate the effect but it also gets rid of the monster on the field really important yeah they don't extend with the other emancipator monsters true so dark ruler for rocks as well uh, yeah, also what's really cool, like the pure Elven deck can't really make use of this card. Like it can, but it's not very good. On this deck, like if I go activate Dark Wheeler, normal summon Kaspar, I go like add four musket spell traps and then. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, the three cyclone. Uh, just because it's so good against uh, any Elven variant, because it banishes the, the spells and traps. And the last two one offs are the order. Uh, in order just for like going first against basically everything. Yeah, it's just it uh, comes up. Every deck plays a spell card. And yeah, it's just super high impact. Red Reboot because you can play through stuff in this deck. Um, yeah, Red Reboot is mostly because it's so good with the muskets, right? If you go normal summon muskets, they do something to prevent it. You just Red, red Reboot them. If like four sets or five sets, you go max. Summon three people. from the deck. Yeah, and then you can go like Trisbane, banish everything, and at that point, like, it's just oh, that's it's so over. it's so free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So cool. So um, really, really solid. Um, so the let me check real quick. The tournament was an online tournament of eighty-four people. Yeah, it was held by right. Yugi Joe. Uh, check them out on Facebook. And... Or YouTube. Sorry. Or the YouTube. Or did you like YouTuber, I think, yeah. Maker of game videos. So check the YouTube. I will link it in the description down below. Yeah. And yeah, how many rounds were there, Josh? Uh, let's see. I think it was seven, seven rounds of Swiss. Went 6-1 in the end. I lost to like uh, uh, this guy who also topped. He played Elfage with the Lucky Firebox engine, which was really strong. Okay. Uh, and then uh, top eight. Okay, pretty cool. And you lost in the top four due to uh, misplay. Uh, uh, yeah, I made like two minor misplays, but they did end up costing me the game. Like it's too confluent to get into the exact place. I just I could have played it slightly better, and maybe I would have won. Um, but in the end, I lost to uh, Gabriel, uh, who won the event. So good on him. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, not not really something bad to lose to, you know, the winner of the yeah. event. So, a good player. I already knew him from before. Like we played each other in like round ten of White at Kent last year. So, okay, nice. A lot of familiar faces that participated. Yeah, for sure. Like I played against like, three Dutch players, which is quite insane. Okay. <laughs> if you think about it. Um, and like there were lots of big names like uh, Adrian Dursum played, uh, Oliver Newton, uh, I don't know, there were lots of uh, pretty good players. Nice. So did you like participating in the online tournaments? Because of course I mean, it's difficult times now, so... Yeah, uh, it's a bit weird, right? Because like, I obviously prefer playing like with the real cards. Yeah. But it's just something fun to do because there's not much to do in these team times, right? So, yeah, exactly. You know, can play just Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty nice. It's really cool. Like of all the all the people who are hosting these, like, have the possibility to play if you want. Yeah, it's really nice that there at least is a plan B because I, I'm just like you. I just want to have you know the real cards in my hands. But yeah. It is nice to uh, spend your time to play some online to just keep up your skills, you know. Yeah, uh, exactly. Because as we were discussing before, today was our that was the final day of our uh, national championship. Should have been, been uh, national uh, national this weekend. Yeah, exactly. So now you're the uh, you're still the Dutch champ. So congratulations. Uh, yeah, 
Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, is there anything else you want to add? Any shout outs? Uh, yeah, I want to give a shout out to uh, Yugi Lansman. We talked about the deck. Uh, like, he got me into playing the Elfish deck. Okay, nice. And we talk about it a lot. And also, we played each other in round, uh, round six. Sadly, I beat him. Well, not sadly for me, but sadly for him. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, shout outs to CCG, of course, best team, and uh, our sponsors, Card Market and Ultimate Guard. Yes, I will link your team page uh, in the comment section. Not that anyone <laughs> does not know CCG at this point. But, uh, I mean, you never know. Exactly. So thank you, Joshua, for this exclusive look, and congratulations with your top four spot. And thank you so much. I am sure that we will see much more muskets from you. <laughs> I think so as well. Okay. Thank you, guys. If you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Adios.